Amen. Thank you, Brother Blake. That was awesome. One day I will sing like you. <laughs> I will not lose hope. <laughs> Amen. Uh, thank you for joining us from all over the world. We are still okay. Let me check my see that it's working. Yes, it's working. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Today is a very special day. For three reasons. <laughs> Reason number one is my bride's birthday. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, the best wife ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I celebrate you. Amen. And uh, with great respect, I say. Happy birthday. Amen. When today is a great day for another reason. Amen. We lost to heaven a very a very important and very great soul. Mm. Ravi mm -hmm. Zacharias. Okay. I love him mm. to pieces. Mm. Never met him, but I listened uh, to his messages, watched his video. Is about he is not about the greatest apologist yeah. uh, of this century. Yeah. You know, he was in his class. He went on today. We, we lost him. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. Nobody will live forever yeah. <laughs> on this planet. He's with the Lord. He yeah. is with the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 He was a successful soul. Oh, yes. And the third reason today is great is that it is the day the Lord has made Amen. and you will be blessed. Amen. 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 I have a message for the world, particularly all believers. Okay? And my message is this. There shall be restoration. Hallelujah. There shall be restoration. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Okay? Early on this year, I did prophesy that this year all of you that listen to me is going to be difficult that there will be pains, calamities I did not see the Conora virus coming but I knew there will be pain, the Lord made it no, in fact, the Lord said to me they can't down to the end I started and that this year the earth is going to sneeze and that there will be serious troubles. I did say that out. More calamities are coming. Okay? However, we children of God, mm. our case is different. Yes, Very different. So, I want to speak on God's method of restoration. We will see how God restores mm. His people. Because each time there is calamity, there is always a restoration. Mm -hmm. How is going to happen? How God does it? We'll look at it in the scriptures today. And I want believers everywhere to know that what is going on is not the anger of God. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is a day set apart for the anger of God. It is called the day of the Lord. Anything that happens between now and then, don't call it God's anger. That does not mean that uh, calamities and pestilences don't come from the Lord. But when it happens, it's because God is looking for reconciliation. That's why he will allow any pestilence to happen. So, I want us to understand something. This planet is a land of conflict. It's a land of disagreement. The very first disagreement on this planet happened between God and Adam in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Remember, I ministered um, in the past and I said, there are two things you don't tell the human beings. 
Definitely, you don't tell Americans. <laughs> Number one, don't. Number two, wait. You know, human beings are not processed those two, you know, statements, you know, very well. We have not done well, we think. Don't touch this fruit. There are many other fruits. Eat any one. Thousands and thousands of fruits. Only this one. Do not touch it. Of course, you know what happened. So, after that time, we've been having conflict and conflict at times. You know, conflict between people and God. At times, be within the people. One people against the other. Or between the people and Satan. In fact, you know, I always tell people who say, when I was offended in the church, that's why I left. So you read the Bible very well. Jesus said, if your brother offends you, what does that mean? Your brother is going to offend you? Yes. And that's it. So don't say, oh, I'm so surprised they offended me. And it's the land of offend offenses. When there is offense in the body of Christ, we have no choice. We have to settle. We cannot have offenses that we refuse to settle. No, that is not the persona of children of God. So now, apart from the fact that this planet is a land of offenses, let me also quickly uh, tell you that you know, God is always looking for reconciliation. Amen. Okay? Anytime people disagree with the Lord, and when you read the Bible, it's full of conflict between God and his people. But God always looks for reconciliation. That is his persona. Of, of course, he came to the Garden of Eden to reconcile. Yes. I always say, I wish Adam busted into tears. And he crying. So how can I see your face when I have disobeyed you? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Do everything possible. Now, Jesus will still have to die for us, but it will have been much easier. But Adam said, did I ask you for a wife? Did I ever disobey you? The woman you gave me, gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Therefore, you, you are at fault. That complicated issues. <laughs> it complicated issues between us and our God. Why did Jesus go to the cross? God was seeking reconciliation. Amen. And many times after there is pandemic, either it is caused by the devil or by, you know, there are three sources of pestilences. Okay. It could be from, you know, human beings, they do biological warfare. You know, the history of America, we were told they used smallpox to fight the Native Americans. So, uh, pestilence can start from human beings. From the feelers we are hearing, mm -hmm. it's like this coronavirus is engineered in a laboratory. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in a laboratory. That's how they pronounce it in America. Eh? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like it is uh, well, uh, that books were written before it in which so they, they even mentioned the name of the virus, the year and the lab, the place it will, it will start. So human beings can start uh, a pandemic. The devil usually is the one that starts it. Even when the human being is involved yeah. he only uses them. Yeah. And in rare occasions, God can start it by just withdrawing is is help okay so but each time there is a pandemic in the bible every time whether from god from the devil or from human beings god always come for reconciliation okay and uh, if you have ministered in any nation where they just finished the war you will see miracles it's so easy you will see miracles because after the trauma, God is always looking for peace. He's always looking for restoration. He's ready to bless the people. Okay? So, 
Ah, it is the devil that creates traumas. He uses trauma, you know, usually. Okay? He causes pain. He uses diseases. He is looking for opportunity to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the devil likes to do. Okay? And anywhere the devil succeeded in doing that, if the children of God goes to that land, God always performs miracles. If you have never seen miracle before, go to where they just finished war and preach. I promise you, you will see miracles. It, it always happens. It is in the persona of our God to lift people up, to deliver his people. Okay? Uh, friends, if God just withdraws his hand, mm. one second, we will be in trouble. Mm. Because uh, the day God let me understand that there are more demons than all the human beings that ever lived. I was, yes, I was shocked. I was shocked. Ready to act. It is our God's mercy that we are still alive, that we are not completely destroyed. God is active on this planet. The Bible says a third of the angels of God follow Lucifer. Mm. Heaven is a huge place. Mm. The earth is tiny. One third of angels in heaven. They run into trillions. It's not a small thing. So, friends, that is it. The devil is, you know, mm. <laughs> is always ready to cause havoc. Mm. So we are, we've been enjoying the, the blessing of the Lord over and over and all over. But my focus tonight is this. God uses those trauma, those pandemic to reset the earth. That's what he uses it to do. Each time in, in, in history of God's people that there is pandemic, it will bring restoration and restore the people back to himself. That's, he always does that. It's an opportunity to reset the people. The only time I will say maybe God quarrel with the people and there was no uh, opportunity for them to reset is in the Noah's flood. Okay? And we can still say he reset them. Eight people survived. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but it was a massive uh, catastrophe. So, uh, friends, like I said, more calamities are coming, and uh, it's a great opportunity for us because there shall be revival. Write it down. Write in that New York. People will troop back to God. Mm. You understand? Yeah. There will be revival after this Please. pandemic. Yes. It will not be New York mm. alone, Absolutely. everywhere. But now people will suddenly, there is fear, you know, gripping the people. They, they will realize suddenly that they need God. Amen. They need God. Amen. You know, uh, Charles, uh, no, it's not, Spurgeon yeah. said that atheism is a very strange thing. Mm -hmm. But even the devil believes there is God. <laughs> he knows there is God. <laughs> <laughs> so now, but when you read the scriptures very well, if atheism is going to fail mm -hmm. big time, yeah. okay, even though people may not turn back to God, they will begin to worship lesser gods. That's what happens when you reject the Almighty God, you bow down to lesser gods. It's in the Bible. The Bible says the people will worship the Antichrist. You understand? His prophet will bring fire from the sky and the people will worship him. That time, atheism will collapse. Yeah. Uh, there is no God. That's an exit. <laughs> that, that nonsense will not continue. I tell you, when there is serious calamity, <laughs> people will bow to God. And because they rejected Jesus Christ, a time is coming, the Bible says, they will accept the Antichrist and, and bow to him. Isn't they? Look, God did not create a human being to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You understand? We are vessels. That's what 
the Bible calls us, we are vessels. A vessel is created for something, you know, to be inside of it. So when there is no God, something else we, you know, he plays in. You know, that's just it. I remember the late Rafi Zacharias was debating uh, this loud mouth uh, atheist, uh, Professor uh, Dawkins. Uh, Richard, is it Richard Dawkins? Hawkins? Yeah. Huh? Hawkins. Daw Dawkins. Dawkins. Okay. Yeah. He was debating him, and along the way, <laughs> Professor Dawkins said, Oh my God. <laughs> and everybody posted it to laughter. Newspapers carried it the following day. Say it was a bad day for atheists. <laughs> he said there is no God. Uh, Ravi Zechariah just asked him a question. He, did, he forgot it and he said, oh, oh my God. Okay, that's it. Okay, you are a vessel. Either God is there or the devil is there. Okay, so friends, the church must take back that which the devil has stolen mm. during this pandemic. Yeah. God's people must rise up yes. and take it back. Yes. We must give him a bloody nose. Yes. We must demonstrate the spirit and the power of God. Mm. Now, you need to understand something, friends. The way God has chosen to prove himself on this planet, two ways. He's made up his mind. Those are the only two ways. Through what he has done, the work of his hand. The Bible says the work of his hand is a testimony for the power of God. The Bible never defend the existence of God or try to prove his existence. No, it's taken for granted. The Bible starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm. The work of God is how he validates himself. It is the same thing with our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I said it recently, uh, uh, you know, in this fellowship. When uh, John the Baptist sent that vitriolic message to our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you the one? Or shall we wait for another? What did he say? He said, tell John what you have heard and see. The lame walks, the blind sees, the dead are raised to life, and the poor receive the gospel. That is the answer. So we need to understand something. God is not joking with his work. Okay? So, it is a good practice to thank God for everything he's doing, whether in your life or in others' life, whether in the Bible times or today. God validates himself through his work. That's number one. Second way, he reveals himself through his people, through you and me. You understand? God is not going to, you know, even when he came here, he came in the flesh. Right? Mm -hmm. He came in the flesh. He will not come on this planet as God with his glory. Nobody will wait for him. <laughs> no, but the glory is too much. Mm -hmm. So he has to dance size. Mm -hmm. He has to come as a man. So it is through you and I that God is going to reveal himself. So let's get ready. Each time somebody says there is no God and I'm there, I blame myself. Praise the Lord. Because it's my fault. I should be so much anointed that you don't say that, you know, where I am. Praise the Lord. You don't just say that. Pray. Friends, God wants to reveal himself through you. And it's not difficult. You know, I remember the story, uh, I've said it before, of an evangelist in Nigeria, in a city called Ibadan, you know, big city, he was wearing this oversized uh, uh, coat, distributing tracts on the road. And uh, as he was distributing tracts, there is this very rich, you know, when an African lady is rich, she can't hide it, you know. It shows in her dressing. Very gorgeous. You can see the way my wife is dressing. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> this is even nothing. They put on gold, you understand? Bangles, 
flowy dress, you know, they show off. Amen. Pretty. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay. This lady was fabulously dressed. And when the evangelist gave her the track, she got the angry. said, hey, we can look at you, you, you. <laughs> and the spirit of the Lord said to the evangelist, he said, tell her she is hiding cocaine in her private part and she is on her way to the airport. Tell her she will be arrested and she will be jailed. The evangelist just adjusted and said, say, the Lord says you are hiding, you know, cocaine in your private part. You are on your way to the airport. You refuse to accept Jesus Christ. You will be arrested and you will go to jail. The woman stretched like stockfish. Now she's ready to listen. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to you? May the Lord give us the grace, the anointing to represent him. Yeah. It's not so difficult. Mm -hmm. yes. Now she was ready to listen. Be very by the time the, the, the man of God the, you know, spoke prophetically into her life, she, she gave her life to Christ, Amen. shaking where she was. Amen. Amen. Yes. Friends, the Lord Hallelujah. wants to reveal himself through you. Amen. I've seen evangelists who go on the street praying for the sick, and miracles were happening on the street. If we do what we're supposed to do, the people will not reject Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Anywhere the power of God is demonstrated, the gospel triumphs. The gospel grew. That's it. I see a great revival Amen. coming on the world, Amen. coming on the United States of America. There are common Christians. Nobody is common Christian, but let me use that word. Amen. No, no. Just any Christian is so much anointed that the demons will scream out. You know, the sick will be healed. The gospel will be preached with power. The Lord needs some harvest of souls before the Antichrist we 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 emerge. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Many souls, you know, are waiting. There shall be the manifestation of the sons of God. This is the time is going to happen. So everybody, get ready. Amen. Get ready. Uh, we are more than able. We can do it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because it is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I want us to look into the scriptures and see how God restores his people. But before we go into that, let's look at why people grow cold towards God. Okay, why is it that you know there will be a generation that worship the Lord and another generation will take over from them who care little about God? Why do we have the problem? Let's quickly go into the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 7, then verse 10 to 15. Judges, chapter 2, verse 7. It reads, So the people served the Lord. All the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Okay? Mm -hmm. The people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and the days of the elders that had to leave them who saw the great works of the Lord. Let's jump, jump to verse 10. Okay, uh, Judges chapter, chapter 2, verse 10 to 15 now. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers after they died, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. How can that happen? God put measures in place. Always commemorate this. Always celebrate this. Tell your children this. They must not forget. That's why we give testimonies. Our children must know the goodness of the Lord. Amen. You can't hide it. Yes. You understand? I don't waste time telling my children, <laughs> if I give you a dime, it comes from the Lord. I give them testimony, how God provide for me. You have to serve this God because he's the one that provides for our family. 
we should be in need, struggling for money. Now, this is how the Lord is providing. I let them know. And at times they ask me, Daddy, I need this. Okay, you will fast and pray with me. We will talk to God. We have to do everything possible. We can still do everything right and they don't follow. We need to pray so that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying it's um, a, a, a airtight method, but the Bible asks us to do it. And with the grace of God on them, all of them will respond. We will not lose his soul to have fire in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the, the, another generation arose. They knew nothing about the goodness of God to Israel. They did not know. Verse 10 says so. Look at verse 11. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the bears. You know, it, it's always the problem in Israel. There was a time the Bible says there was no teaching priest in Israel. So the people went back to sin. No teaching priest. You know, anytime there is the scarcity of the word of God, the word of God becomes scarce. The people will go back to sin. So we need to make sure there is the abundance of the word of God. So that's what happened. So the children of Israel started to worship Baal. It's very, very uh, re repugnant, you know, uh, you know, God, the, the, you know, idol. Okay? People burn their children alive. You know, to bear, to ask for is a, is a dirty, horrible idol. It's very demonic. Okay? So, Israel started to do that. Verse 12, And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. Let's jump to verse uh, 14. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of the plunderers who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around. So they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went, verse 15, they went out. The hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said. And as the Lord has sworn to them, and they were greatly distressed. Okay? It always happened that way. People forsake the Lord, and they begin to suffer for, you know, their sin. Look at the story of Europe. They sent missionaries all over the world. Great minister, you know, uh, arose from them. How many will you count? The Spodion, all of them, so many of them. Okay, you know, they came, they ministered, but during the Industrial Revolution, everybody was running after money. No time for, for God, no time for God. The generation that took over did not have the culture of going to the church. Cathedrals became empty. Now they are sending it to, you know, uh, you know cinemas where they even they practice pornography and all those. In the temple where great men, and women of God preached and ministered where they have revival. Now it's where you see naked women dancing, a pool, whatever they, they call it. It's, it's more than abomination, it's a bombing universe. Yeah. It's very sad. Very, very sad. Yeah. So, friends, that's what happened. When one generation failed to teach their children, the next generation, yeah. the word of God, mm -hmm. that is what happened. And I think. Our generation is not doing too well. Statistics shows that when teenagers leave, you know, uh, leave home for college, over seventy percent of them don't return to the church. Why? There is no fire in the church. What we have is gimmicks, method. You understand? Hey, different method of, to keep the youth. For how long will you keep them? You understand? We, we introduce our own dancing clubs, our own this. They have it better outside. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? We need the power of God. The church is not where you preach theory, preach it, preach it, preach it, and you scream, you scream, and there is no power of God. Mm -hmm. You understand? You know, 
you don't come to church to make fun. If that is if that is it, you will soon run out of fun. That's, right. yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. True. What a church without the power of God mm -hmm. is a club. Yeah. It is a club. Mm -hmm. And I always challenge every man of God or a woman of God. Don't just preach and go sit down. Pray for miracles. Pray yeah. for uh you know for healing. You know, lead people, you know, into deliverance. Rebuke the devil. Cast out the devil. All those of you that say, God, God is now asleep. He has retired. He doesn't heal anymore. He doesn't cast out demons anymore. He doesn't bless people anymore. When people in your church have the money problem, you send them into, in, in, into the hospital. Well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations. You will never have revival without the power of the Lord. That is for sure. Now, okay, quickly, let us go into how God restores his people. Amen? Uh, let's quickly do that, okay? And um, the Lord is going to bless us in the book of Joel. Actually, it is Joel. Uh, but in America, they say it is Joel. This is America. Let me say Joel. Chapter 2. <laughs> Amen. Verse 21 to 29. I quickly run through it. In this passage, we have powerful principles of restoration. And the church must be ready. They must be ready. Amen. Say, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Verse 22, do not be afraid, you beasts of the field. Okay, even the beasts were dying because there was famine, no food. Even the God started speaking to the beast. They did nothing wrong, but human sin affected them. Okay, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Verse 23, be glad then, you children of Zion. Now he's talking to human beings, okay? And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Notice that, the former rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The key to understanding this passage is that phrase. In the first month. If you understand the word in the first month they represent, then you get the principle. It's so easy. Very easy. Amen. Verse 24. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the verts shall overflow with new wine and oil. 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarmy locust has eaten, the crawling locust. The consuming locust wow. and the chewing locust. Wow. My great army, which I sent among you. Okay, do you see it? Locust, four types. Swarming locust, locust, crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust. Okay, currently we don't have locust. We have something much smaller than locust. Wow. The coronavirus. <laughs> God said, my great army, which I sent among you. Uh, the coronavirus is a terrible army, okay? I don't know whether the Lord sent it, but I know it's a fitting into, the God's, into God's program for this time. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 26, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to, to shame. Do you see? The praise and the worship of God is in the middle. You will eat plenty and be satisfied. You will worship the Lord, you know, and you will not be put ashamed. <laughs> so, you know, worshiping God is, in the, is the nucleus of our welfare. Amen. That's how it is. In verse 27, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Now, this passage, if it has stopped there, could have been another thing. But here, the prophet linked it to our time. And that is very, very important for us today. 
verse 28 and do you see that and in addition to this right that's the meaning of and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also on my men servants on, on my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days the lord is linking you know baptism of the holy spirit coming on everybody is linking it to restoration here okay the purpose is to restore you understand then how will god do this restoration let's go back to verse 23 okay he so said i will give you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month okay uh how is that going to happen because he suddenly just say don't worry there will be plenty of food for human beings for animals the tree will bear fruit and you will just eat how will it happen suddenly they have famine now you need to understand very well that number one israel in those days in the days of joel they practiced what we called rain fed agriculture no rain no planting no harvesting so that's why elijah stopped the rain for three and a half years you understand they were not irrigating in those days it's basically rain fed agriculture okay so the former rain is the planting rain. It comes in the autumn. Some translation call it the autumn rain. So when it starts to rain, they go and plant. Their main something is wheat. They plant the wheat and some other things. You know, Jesus talking about the wheat and the tares. So the wheat is something they plant very, they planted very well in Israel. So they will plant. Now, the latter rain is the harvest rain it comes four months later i will show you in the bible okay immediately the latter rain begins every farmer will take the sickle and run to the field and start to harvest because the low um the locust comes with the latter rain so if you don't harvest on time the locust will take over so that is why it is described as the harvest rain. Am I talking to you? So when God said, I will give you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, he's saying, I will give you the planting rain and the harvest rain in the first month. You will plant, you will reap, in one month wow. that's a great miracle wow. now it means what does that mean it means both god and man we've been involved in in, in in restoration john chapter 4 verse 35 john 4 35 this is what he says he says say not ye that are yet four months and then comes a first Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So they said, in four months, there will be harvest. That's the gestation period for wheat, mm -hmm. four months. So, you know, the latter rain, sorry, the former rain starts, and uh, the latter rain comes four months later. Now, God now said, you will have the, the planting rain, and the harvest rain in the first month. That is to say, it will not take four months. I will restore you immediately. Mm. Suddenly, the trees will begin to bring fruit as well. This is how God restores his people. You understand? But that means the job of four months, they will do it in one month. Mm. Amen? Restoration involves hard work. It means the church must be ready to pray. Amen. Harder than before. Amen. It means the church must be ready to stick to the word of God. 
the church must be ready to explore the word of God and study the word of God. We must be ready to become Berean Christians. The time for superstars is over. Amen. Praise the Lord. The time is over. God promised he will pour the spirit upon all flesh and he link it to restoration. How does God restore his people today? Through the Holy Spirit. Through everybody being, you know, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. He brings restoration. Friends, what it takes, look at Elijah. All the miracles he performed in his ministry. 16. Elisha, all the miracles he performed in his life. 31. He carried the anointing for the 32nd one to the grave. So when they threw a, a corpse and they touched his uh, bones, you know, he resurrected, making 32, double portion of anointing. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Now, today, the miracles we experience far outweighs what they experience in their lifetime in one week, in one day. You understand? Know, That's what happens when everybody carries the grace. It's not, more, it's not the plan for, for the church. There are only few people are anointed and they are the only one that can do it. You understand? Know, when they are not around, everybody miss them. Say, hey, no, the Spirit of God is not around today. Why? Because the pastor has traveled. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what, you know, Joel says. Your sons, your daughters will see visions. They will prophesy because I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. So, friends, we have what it takes to restore you know, the people back to God. And uh, because time is flying, you know, it's fleeting, you know, there are, all God does to restore you is what the Bible describes as redeeming the time. That's it. Look at, you know, what he did during the time of Joel. He said what you do in four months, you will do it in one month. That's redeeming the time. You understand? You fast forward the time <laughs> for them, you know, just plan Within the event, <laughs> you start to harvest. As we are putting it in the ground, pew, he did it in fast forward time. And we see this throughout the Bible. Let me quickly give you the three instances. You see, our God doers outside time. So he can pause it, he can rewind it, he can fast forward, forward it for any of his children. You understand? That's how he restores his people. We see uh, what he did for Elijah. You remember, you remember the story? Um, uh, Elijah stopped praying for three and a half years. Amen. And they went to the mountain. And when the rain was about to fall, he sent for, he sent Obadiah, he said, tell Ahab to come and see me. So the king came. And he was praying. And uh, he gave uh, the word of God to Ahab. Come back to your palace because I can hear the rumbling of the sun. If you don't run, the rain will beat you. Ahab should have said, Man of God, join me in my chariot so that the rain doesn't beat you. But Ahab was not a good man, you know. He wasn't nice. He was not a nice man at all, you know. He entered into the chariots, you know, his chariot, and ran away. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46, after Ahab had left, this is what the Bible says. 1 Kings 18, 46. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He how to run the chariots, a old man. The hand of the Lord came on him, and he how to run the chariots of the king. God fast forward time for him. Am I talking to you? It does not matter how much you lost during this pandemic. It does not matter who has overtaken you in life. It does not matter how much behind you are. All you need is the hand of the Lord coming on your head. You will outrun everybody that have gone ahead of you. You understand? There is nothing like, oh, time is running out on me. I don't. God can fast forward time. He can rewind it. He can pause it. All you need is his hand on you. So, folks, 
Uh, many people lost their jobs. Uh, you know, uh, some shops are closing, you know, down. Uh, there is hypertension, you know, there is tension going on. People were losing, you know, uh, faith. No, don't do it. Seek the face of the Lord. His hand coming on you is all you need. He will redeem your time. Okay, we saw in Isaiah 38, verse 8, to save, to save time, God, you know, rewound, re, you know, rewound the time. Okay, you know, uh, when Ezekiah said, how shall I know that God will heal me? You know, God told him, he said, behold, I will bring the shadow on the sun dial, which has gone down with the sun, on the sun dial of airs, 10 degrees backward. Okay, so the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. One hour. You understand? The law rewound the time. It, 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 it did not just happen in the land of Israel because later on the king came to inquire how it happened. You understand? From Ezekiah. How did it happen? This sign was serious. God can rewind time for you. If you feel, oh, time has overtaken you, you are lagging behind, or whatever, there are things you missed in the past. It can just rewind time for you. Okay? And in Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 14, we see Joshua saying, Son, stand still. And God paused the time. Amen? The Bible commented, it said, there was no day before it and after it. That the Lord hearkened to the force of a man like that. It was serious. I'm begging God, let there be another day when you will listen to me. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm very jealous. Let me tell you the truth. <laughs> if he did it for Joshua, I want it too. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, friends, and he's still doing it today. I will round up this message by giving you a testimony. It happened in our ministry. My wife knows it. Amen. I was ministering in a church in Ireland. <coughs> Amen. And um, it was a bad night for me. It was a night vigil. And I didn't feel the anointing that night. I struggled and struggled and struggled. I didn't feel the anointing. It was my first time in Ireland. And uh, that was the pastor that brought me in. He invited me. I've ministered in some other branches. Fire, anointing. But the guy that really brought me, I ministered and it's as if nothing happened. Of course, I was tired too. So, in frustration, I handed over the microphone and I was telling myself, this guy will never invite you here again. This is your last time. Because when they invite you, there should be a reason they want to bring you back. <laughs> so, but as I was handing over the microphone, I heard the Lord said, I am redeeming somebody's time here. I'm removing, you know, some years from, you know, from my life. I was happy. I collected the microphone. I said, there is somebody here. The Lord is redeeming your time. It will remove from years, maybe 15 years like uh, uh, Ezekiah, from you. I thought the anointing would touch the person who would go on the floor. Nothing happened. It was so strange. So I handed over the microphone and I went to see how I slept. I just cut out on the bed, you know, disappointed. But when I woke up, I received a phone call. And the lady said, huh, I was in the night Fiji. Night Fiji is, you know, we Africans, we do it. We like to pray all night. You, you, you don't get it. Why? People will not sleep over it, but I pray. But we, we do it. <laughs> I think we, the Philippines, the Filipinos, and the South Koreans, we are the one crazy enough to pray all night. Mm. Uh, so for the Caucasians, they enjoy their sleep. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> So this lady called me and said, you mentioned God is redeeming somebody's time. He said, do you know what happened? He said, I have three boys. So when I wake up, when I woke up, the first son came out and said, mom, what happened to you? You look so young. Are you my mom? 
Mm, she thought it's just uh, the boy just being nice. Mm. The second boy came and said, excuse me, what am I looking at? You look so young. The third boy said, mom, what happened to you? I only recognize you by your voice. So the woman went to the mirror. When she looked at the mirror, she couldn't see any wrinkle. It disappeared. And she opened her mouth. She called her sister in London and said, if you see me, you will not recognize me. Her husband traveled out to South Africa. She called the husband and said, you have a brand new wife. When you see me, you wouldn't recognize me. When the husband came and saw his wife, he asked, is the man of God still around? They said, yes, he's around. He said, everybody, everybody. He took all the family. They came to my house. The man came and knelt down and said, I want what happened to my wife to happen to me. I look at him. I say, my brother, are you crazy? Do you think I keep anointing in my pocket? Can't you see lines on my own face too? Yeah. If I keep it in trouble, I will wipe all the lines off. <laughs> say, look at my wife. Twice the, <laughs> twice the original size when I met her. If I have that anointing in my pocket, she will never grow. I will be renewing her every day. Go back to 16. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There is nothing I didn't say to discourage this guy. Say, no, you must lay hands on me. I lay hands me. I almost broke the neck. I didn't say anything happened. So, friends, God can redeem your time. He can redeem it spiritually and physically. There is nothing our God cannot do. I have seen that miracle twice in, you know, in, in, in our ministries. And it will continue. When God renew people and they look much younger than before, I'm begging him to do it for my wife and, and do it for me too. And I get rid of all these lines. I just look 16. That will be fun. Well, what do you think? <laughs> so, revival is coming. Restoration is coming. The Lord will stretch out his mighty hand. We will see the power of the Lord again. The Lord will silence the devil. The Lord will restore his people. The people will troop in into, you know, uh, into churches. They will give their life back to the Lord because of the revival that will come. The devil thinks he's having a nice time. You know, he is digging himself into a hole. Okay? The Lord will reap a lot of souls. So it is time for the church to come together, to wake up, and begin to ask the Lord to stretch out his mighty hand. This is not the time to be weak in faith, to behave like a weakling. We have to be strong. We have to be very, very, very specific in asking the Lord, you know, 